interesting that my investigators, when when I got put in the room, when our shop got locked down, and I was put in the room in front of the CID, and I don't know, it might have been a Secret Service or an FBI. They had whatever whatever agencies were available at the time. I think that's who was there conducting the interviews. That was that was interesting. Yeah, it was really good because I was there uh, when the Oklahoma City bombing. Oh, occurred. really? Yeah. And right off the bat, you know, that truck was rented right outside the back gate mm-hmm. of Fort Riley at that little rental, you know, U-Haul rental place or Ryder rental, whatever the hell that truck was. Yeah. Um, and we had two individuals within, you know, our company um, or detachment that, you know, looked just like the the, the photos, the, the oh, really? images, yeah. Um, That's awkward. <laughs> yeah, and and so yeah, it was you know Ryan Field and, and Jeff uh, or no Mike Fleener, Ryan Field and, and Mike Fleener were their names. Yeah, and uh, they looked just like those two, and so immediately, um, so uh, CID and the, the the police came to our command. And everybody got pushed inside. They locked the fence, and none of us were allowed to leave. And then really? CID and and a, uh, FBI and uh, you know there was multiple federal agencies that were then that fell down upon us. Yeah. And everybody got interviewed. Everybody separated and interviewed, and and they they kept us for for quite a while. And uh, and then after. Uh, then we were kind of included in kind of the investigative, and they would, you know, there a lot of a lot of doors got kicked in, a lot of uh, pawn shops, uh, you know, military surplus stores, places like that, all in the northern, because the army, you know, we participated in, you know, whenever whenever a law enforcement need occurred, you know, that that you would you would respond with them, okay, and uh, and so or for them in whatever it is that you know whether they found ordinance or whatever but yeah uh, we we were along for the ride for for quite a few of their trips because i think they were expecting you know nefarious things yeah and uh it was interesting so we were we were part of that i operated the robot we opened up terry nichols house really in harrington kansas so i was the guy that put the key in the robot and drove down and put the key in the door, turned the key, opened the door and pushed it open and drove the robot in. So that's awesome. Yeah. Was that, uh, how, how much, how many times did you practice putting a key in a door before you, you went and did that? So we did a lot of robot rodeos. So the, yeah. the, at the time it was the, uh, remote tech system, okay. I think, you know, later Ron's, whatever. Okay. Anyway, yeah. um, so that system was pretty new, and everybody was pretty excited, you know, when we got them because we traded in this old, yellow, wheelbarrow-looking uh-huh. ugly thing. Yeah, it was yeah. terrible. And and we picked up the Andros, right? The the remote tech Andros, I think, is what it was referred to as. And okay. so we got those robots, and and some of the best DoD techs that the Army at the time that I knew of, you know, that were out there. Um, what we did robot rodeos and we would pick up eggs and you know we would do things like that so you actually you had to get pretty good with it and uh, so we played with them quite a bit that was you know nothing like the robots we have today but it was it was still pretty impressive for us and so we practiced a lot that was that was something that you know we didn't just sit around in a shop you actually you know you know Mm -hmm. yep you you use your equipment and so we did and and so yeah when it came time to actually use it i don't it wasn't easy it was a challenge because you know it's very difficult to figure out which way does the door turn which way does it turn to unlock because you stick a key in the door it doesn't always i don't know if you picked any locks but you know officially no yeah (laughs) of course not um, but yeah, you don't, it's, it's, it's a challenge because you just don't know, you know, which way to go, but yeah, yeah. so we pulled that off and that, that was good, but, uh, but we participated, we, at that, from that point we checked all the mail and, you know, I mean, they were worried about everything at that point. Yeah. You know, so. I bet, I mean, you got some dudes that did some pretty crazy stuff that really is kind of almost unthinkable to that. To that point like in in america anyways yeah, unthinkable kind of that stuff at that time wasn't wasn't norm 
Right. And, and now I think now, well, because we didn't have the social media back then, I think that I think that maybe those little small things were occurring around the country. You always have that one-off, right? Right, yeah. That does that dumb thing. But I think now, I think we see everything that happens now mm -hmm. because you don't have to be watching local news. Now, you know, everything is local with Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. And, and so... Something actually interesting. So with the, uh, the way they... they made that you know homemade bomb basically in in that truck how much exposure up to that point as neo detect did you did you guys have to that that method of you know making homemade explosives to to do something like that so at that time <clears throat> i you know i don't believe that i was i was still relatively new okay um with NEOD, because like, I graduated in August of 93, and I don't remember when that bomb went off, but it probably wasn't much more than a year after that. Yeah. And so, yeah, we had our little, every morning you would start the day with, uh, you know, a, a piece of ordinance or a, you know, whatever it was that that, uh, whoever was in charge of training for that day had to, had to pick that training topic. So we may have brushed on something like that occasionally but no i did not have a wealth of knowledge because i was a young new guy yeah and so not a lot of experience and and i don't think anybody was probably a an hme right you know yeah acronyms are terrible homemade explosives yeah. <laughs> but it, you know that just was not a thing you know back then yeah yeah I, that, that's what I, like just kind of dawned on me you know as the you take now because of the wars for the last 20 years, almost everybody who's an EOD tech has had some type of schooling in it or at least been taught a bunch about it, um, even if they didn't go to school and make it themselves. But, yeah, like, just way back then, you know, like, like you said, without it being, without that knowledge being just commonplace, it, it, would, it would make sense to me that unless it happened in your local area that's kind of a thing that that doesn't really happen here right. so, <laughs> until it does right and that yeah that was that was unusual and, and interesting that my investigators when when i got put in the room when our shop got locked down and i was put in the room in front of the cid and i don't know it might have been a secret service or an fbi they had whatever whatever agencies were available at the time i think that's who was there conducting the interviews yeah and uh because I, I don't remember exactly, but there was multiple federal agents. We had ATF. Everybody was there. And uh, I don't remember who was in the room with me, but my interview, that's what they're asking me. is about, you know, ANFO and what does it take to ignite it? What does it take to, to cause the detonation or the explosion? Or, you know, in my mind, what they wanted me to kind of go through mm -hmm. it with them, describe it. And I was like, wow. You know, and I was a young guy, and I think I did all right. I yeah. probably would have passed the test, but... You know. It's funny, I, I can imagine myself sitting there and being like, all right, I want to be, like, I don't want to be looked at as like an idiot EOD tech, but also I don't want to give them too much information because I don't want to be a suspect. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I think we knew at the time somebody was a suspect because yeah. they locked us down. Yeah. We were shut down. But from from that shop, I mean, I wish I had a map to describe it to you. We weren't but a couple miles away from that rental. Really? Uh, yeah, where that truck was rented. Because we were close to the gate, yeah, at Fort Riley, and right, like literally right outside the gate, that's where it was rented. And so, and then we had those two dudes, you know, that looked. That's so yeah. crazy. I, I mean, if I had their pictures right now, I would show them to you and say, yeah. "Look, this, yeah." But it was it was interesting. Yeah, I I remember when that uh, when that went down because we had uh, his uncle and uh, aunt and uncle that lived out in Oklahoma City, and they they were pretty far away and their windows broke on one side of the house from from the explosion really yeah yeah i remember i went on a vip and it was uh, i don't remember what period i guess i'd have to go back and look through but it was like a week and a half maybe 10 days maybe two weeks later but i went down on a vip and i don't remember who it was maybe al gore i don't 
I don't know if it was POTUS. But anyway, I went down for, for a VIP, and, man, it was it was amazing because I you, the crater in the ground and all the windows, like some of the windows were boarded up, but some of them were still gone. But you just seen from just being downtown. Yeah. Nobody was granted access to that area downtown. And just to be able to go into that area and look around, and, oh, man, it was just amazing. That's got to be cool. Devastating. And by today's standard of you know what what people are creating that was actually maybe it was a it was a large explosion because there was a lot there but yeah. you know i think by today's standard you know that was you know rudimentary right yeah i remember studying eod school and look into specifics about it but they talked about that and how much different it could have been had just a few things changed right in that yeah but it's crazy sometimes we get lucky in unlucky situations i guess you'd say right like, yeah not yeah it was a bad situation but fortunate yeah that it wasn't worse right mm-hmm. 